two. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of cool. What's the slope of that curve at the point one one? Two. Two. You just found it. You found the slope of that curve at that point. And now it made a whole lot more sense because we got to use limits with it. So the slope of that tangent line is two. Can you find the equation to the line? What do you need to find the equation for the line? You need two things. Always find the equation of a line. Point of slope. Do we have a point? What's the point? Okay. Do we have a slope? We do now because we just use limits to find one. That's kind of neat. And we use the slope, no, the point slope formula. Y minus Y1 M X minus X1. Why don't you plug that in there and see what you get, okay? You can all do that. What you've just found on your paper, if you did that by yourself, what you just found on your paper is a slope of a tangent line to the curve x squared at a point. That's the only tangent line that's going to exist at that point. Now here's my question. Is the tangent line going to be different for a different point? For instance, if I give you uh, the point 2 comma 4, are you going to have a different slope? It's a, it's, a, it's a parabola, right? Yeah, it has a different slope at every single point. Every point has a different slope. So, yeah, it's going to be different. You have to redo this every single time. Ultimately, I'm going to find, I'm going to give you a way so that you can find the equation for a t for the slope of a tangent line. That's going to be a little bit better. So we'll do that in, at the end. I just wanted to get you this picture in your head because I've actually given you this example before. Do you remember it? I did that example for you. I did it a long way though. It was a, it was a ways back. But now we have a better way using limits, and we didn't have to make that jump. We didn't have to make the limit jump because now we define limits. So we can actually. Use that. Let's go ahead and start one more. I want to get the first couple pieces of this down, and then we will uh, we'll continue next time. So, next up, isn't that neat though? You found the slope of a curve at a point. I think that's so cool. That's why I love this class. You able to do some neat stuff. Let's find the equation of the tangent line to this curve. at the point, well, let's see, uh, 3, 1. I want to make sure the idea sticks in your head. So, firstly, what are we doing? What's the, what are we, what are you trying to find? Slope of the tangent line to this curve at that specific point. So, we are going to be using that formula again. What I want you to do, see if you can find the two pieces that I need first. How about f of x sub 0 plus h. In this case, can you tell me what is x sub 0, please? Three. Is it the 3 or the 1? Three. It's a 3. It's the x value. So x sub 0 is 3. So instead of x sub 0 plus h, we're going to be finding f of what plus h? 3 plus h. So 3 plus h, right? It's, yeah. it's one thing. Find f of 3 plus h. So I want that. I know that, oops, sorry. I'll write up here x of 0 equals 3, f of x equals 3 over x. That's always our first step, find x of 0 and find your f of x. But now what I'd like you to do in the last few seconds here, find f of 3 plus h, find f of 3. That will take care of your x of 0 plus h and your f of x of 0. Did you already find that as I was talking? Firstly, are you okay that x sub 0 is in fact 3? Yes. yes or no? Mm -hmm. Are you okay that f of x is 3 over x? So we have, we have those two things set in stone. If you want to find this, do the easy one first. f of 3, that just means plug in 3. You should get that value again if it gives you a point, because that is the output for that number. So we should get 3 over 3, or simply 1. Did you all get 1? Mm -hmm. okay, that's the easy one. Now, the other one f of 3 plus h. Is it going to be 3 over, well, what is it going to be? Are you going to have the h at the end or within the function? Yeah, it's, it's 3 plus h, right? Non-separable. So this is 
3 over what? Three. That's exactly right. How many people have exactly that? Good for you. Okay, I'll show you what to do with that next time. We'll actually find a slope of that curve at that point. All right, so let's continue this problem. We're talking about how to find tangents to curves at certain points, which in and of itself is a very interesting question. Specifically here, we're trying to find the tangent line to this curve at that specific point. And I've walked you through this all already. What we're trying to do is fill out the difference quotient, which you guys are familiar with, and then take a limit as h approaches zero. In other words, letting one point get really, 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 really close to this point. Therefore, we have a tangent line to that curve at that point. So we're almost there. We have, we have our f of 3 plus h, we have our f of 3, and we're trying to find out As h approaches 0, what this thing is going to be. That's what we dealt with last time. You remember inventing that last time, I hope, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we already have this part. We already have this part. Let's make our substitution, and then let's see what we can do with it. So if we have this, we'll have our, our limit as h approaches zero, notice you have to keep writing your limit until your limit is gone. It's a must. Uh, instead of f of 3 plus h, please tell me quickly, what am I going to have instead of f of 3 plus h? Okay. Are you okay on the 3 over 3 plus h? Yes, now you see where that's coming from? So instead of f of 3 plus h, I have, well, what that equals, 3 over 3 plus h. Then am I going to have a plus or minus? What do you think? Minus. Yeah, the formula says minus. Minus how much? One. Yeah, f of 3 is 1. All over what, folks? H. Don't forget that h. So we've just made a little substitution. We have 3 over 3 plus h for f of 3 plus h. Cool. Minus, minus. F of 3, well, that is our 1. So here's our limit as h goes to 0. Raise your hand if you're all right with that so far. Good, all right. Now, quick question. Can I cross out the 3s? No. no. You know, I see a lot of people love to do that, right? You go in fast, like, oh, the 3s are the same. I get to cross them out. Yay. No, not so much. We can't cross them out because that's a term, right? That's not a factor. We cannot simplify that in any way, shape, or form. So how in the world are we supposed to get this h? crossed out. That's our ultimate goal because right now if we plug in h, we're going to get 0 over 0. Do you see it? That's going to happen all the time if you let h go to 0 because what this is is the slope between two points. If you let h go to 0, well, you only have one point. If you let it equal 0, we're letting it approach 0. So we are going to have two points, but we need to find a way to manipulate this so we can cross out our h's so we don't have an issue with this. Any ideas? What now? Common denominator. Common denominator would be great because right now I have a complex fraction. I have a fraction over, well, a fraction. I need to make it one fraction of one fraction. That way I can, I can still work with it. So what's our LCD, our common denominator, going to be? Yeah, when you only have one denominator, it's that. So instead of one, notice you're still writing limit. I have 3 over 3 plus h minus, instead of having 1, would you be okay if I put 3 plus h over 3 plus h? Is that the same thing? Sure, yeah, it may as well. <coughs> 1 becomes that, that is still 1. I'm just writing a special so I have a common denominator. Well, if we continue, well, let's see what happens. We've got a limit still h is still going to 0. On the numerator, oh, let's check it out. On the main numerator, I know that I have a common denominator of 3 plus h. Notice when you add or subtract fractions, you do not change the denominator. On the numerator, what am I going to have? H. H. Oh, wrong. Say it again. Why? Minus. Minus. Is that minus important? It's not really important, right? Right? Or yes? yes? No. It's not like we're talking about slope or anything, right? Oh, wait. Huh. That's exactly what we're talking about. 
So if you have your sign wrong, your number goes from this to this, or this to this. Is that a big difference? Big difference. Freaking huge difference, right? You know, we can't do that. So get your signs right. What's actually happening here is you have a parenthesis around that. So what happens with any rational expression? And this says you have 3 minus 3 minus h. Minus h. Yes, no? Okay. All over h. That minus is important. So we'll have a limit. It's still a limit. H is going to zero. We have negative H over three plus H all over H. Okay. What now? What do you want to do now? Okay. Do we have complex fractions? Sure. We have one fraction over one fraction. Change that maybe into a fraction. Make it H over one. You can do that, right? Then what you'll see is I have one fraction divided by another fraction. How you divide fractions is you reciprocate the second fraction and multiply. Do you see it? You have one fraction divided by one fraction. You reciprocate and then multiply. So that will be negative h over 3 plus h times, I'm going to do this all at one step, I'm going to reciprocate and multiply times 1 over h times 1 over h. Are you okay on where the 1 over h is coming from? Are you sure? So I'm reciprocating and multiplying. What happens here? Yeah, I don't want to distribute that h, right? Because right now we have parentheses. You were taught in your whatever class you learned this. Extend that line, cross out those h's if you can because they're, they're now factors. What do I get on the numerator? Negative that negative, oh, that's important. Negative 1, so this is the limit. This is the last time we'll write the limit for this problem. Negative 1 over 3 plus h. Would you raise your hand if you can make it down that far? Feel okay with this? Good deal, that's great. Now, wait a minute, h is on the denominator. Can I plug in 0 and be okay? Yes, yes. <coughs> yes because I'm adding 3 to it, that's fine. If I evaluate, this is where you stop writing the limit. You say, okay, well, this, what this does, this equals negative 1 over 3 plus h. Oh, sorry, 3 plus 0. Because now we can let h go to 0. Now that we've eliminated that problem, that's all right. We can now evaluate that limit. We know it's going to be continuous. There's no problems. There's no holes or asymptotes at this point. Uh, what's our answer? Negative. What would you have gotten if you had forgotten to do this negative here? Positive one third. Is your, is your tangent line going to be correct? No. No, you would have the in, inappropriate tangent line. Okay, well, that's all well and good. Are we done now? This is kind of cool, though. What have you found? What is this thing here? Slope. slope. Always have that in your mind, what you're doing. You're finding slope. This is the slope. This is the slope of that curve. This is the slope of that curve at that specific point. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. Well, that's convenient, and it's not coincidental, but it's convenient because now we have the slope of this curve at that point. We now have a point and a slope, right? What do you need to make the equation of a line? You need a point and slope. So we have that now. I even gave you nice numbers.